What is your reaction after listening to today's gospel of this betrayer of Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve? My dear brothers and sisters, do you feel sorry for Judas? Or were you angry with him? Did you say to yourself, how could he have betrayed the Master after all that Jesus had done for them? After spending three years, day and night, walking, sleeping, eating, listening to him, how could this Men betray the Lord. What kind of heart he had. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, when you were listening to this text, you were asking yourself, whom have I betrayed in my own life? Betrayers is not just that of Judas. It is also ours. In fact, the history of Holy Scripture, the history of salvation, is a long history of betrayers and infidelities, beginning with Adam and Eve betraying the trust of God when God put them in paradise. And then we have Cain who betrayed Abel and killed him. And then he was followed by Jacob, who betrayed Esau of his birthright, Rebekah of Isaac. King David betrayed God and his own army officer whom he killed because he had an adulterous affair with his wife. And the other apostles, Peter and the rest, they also betrayed our Lord. They were no better than Judas. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, before we judge Judas, let us also remember that we have betrayed others in our own ways. And of course, we have been betrayed many times as well. Again and again, we hear so many stories, children betraying their parents when they grow up. For all that the parents have done for them, the sacrifices that they have made, all the education that they have given to them, and yet when the parents grow old, they become elderly and they are abandoned by their children. Or sometimes children are betrayed by their own parents because of infidelity. They expect a loving family, parents that will protect them. Instead, one of them commits adultery and the family broken apart. Some people also betrayed their children that they conceived because they abort them and killed them before they were born. Again, so many instances of business partners betraying each other and friends as well because of love relationship. So my dear brothers and sisters, we are all traitors in our own ways. And it is good for us to remember this. So what are the reasons for us to betray our loved ones? Today, the scripture suggests a few reasons. One of the most important reasons why people betray others is because of greed. We want more. We never have enough. Money, it is said, is the root of all evil if you loved money. And that was what happened to Judas. He was a treasurer of the twelfth. He wanted money and we are told in the scriptures he used the money 
to spend for himself, not for the community. And so he sold Jesus for 30 silver pieces because he was greedy. And greed often happens. And that is the reason, the reason why, as I have said, especially business partners, so often we hear of stories when the other partner, because want to be richer, want to have more money, will sell the company secrets and even the selling the lease of their customers to other competitors. And even in family, we have children, you know, they are grabbing for the parents' inheritance. They manipulate each other. They manipulate their elderly parents when they cannot think, when they are normal alert. All because of money, and money destroys family. Isn't it true every time when you go for a funeral wake? Those who are in bereavement, they are not crying for the death of their disease, of their loved ones. They are inside fighting, angry because of property, inheritance. So money, greed is one of the reasons for betrayal. The other reason why we betray, according to the scriptures, is because we want power. And you know, we are told that Judas, actually some scholars suggested that Judas did not intend to kill Jesus, to betray him. What he wanted was for Jesus to fulfill the role that he thought Jesus was called to be, to be the liberator of Israel from the Romans. But Jesus, you know, he was a man of nonviolence. He was what today the suffering servant tells us in the first reading. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. Jesus was a man of nonviolence. He did not retaliate. And Judas wanted him to respond. So he thought that by having him arrested, Jesus would fight for his life. But as I have said, he did not. And Judas was hoping that if Jesus could liberate them from the Romans, he would have a position in the future kingdom. And again, how true our politics exists everywhere, not just in the political world. Even in family, we have politics. In the offices, and also even in church, religious leaders, political leaders, we all play politics because we want power, power to control others. We want power for recognition. Desiring power itself is not wrong, provided the power that we are asking for is for the service of the common good, not to extol oneself, not to make oneself feel more important than others, but really and truly for the service of others. That is why those of you who are struggling and aiming, aspiring for more power, you must really ask yourself, is this power you are asking for the service of others, humble service, selfless service, or is it for your own glory, for your own wealth? And so we need to be careful because Judas, he wanted power. And there is a third reason why again we betray. And this could be due to wanting things our way, self-will, pride, convenience. Again, we are told that Judas, he wanted his plans to be fulfilled. He wanted Jesus to act according to the plans that he had for Israel. But Jesus did not follow his plans. Jesus 
only follow the plans of his father. Jesus did not submit to Judas' manipulation. And that's why Judas' plan was a failure. And because he failed, he could not forgive himself. When he saw Jesus led away as a prisoner, interrogated, scourged, cruelly put to death, he was devastated. How could his plans fail so miserably? And because he failed, he killed himself. He was too ashamed to look at himself. And that should not be the case. We all make mistakes. The biggest mistake of Judas was that he did not surrender his plan to God's plan. Unlike Jesus, he surrendered his plan, his hands into God's hands. You know, in life, my dear brothers and sisters, life is a mystery. We cannot plan everything. Many things will unfold when the time comes. We just have to be alert to how the Lord wants us to respond to his plans. Rather than determine and expect God to fulfill our plans. This is where the cross begins. When our plans crosses the plans of God, this is where we carry the cross. But if our plans are aligned with the plans of God, there is no cross. There is only joy. There is only acceptance. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, even during this COVID-19 pandemic, we don't really understand the plans of God yet. We have not received the full hindsight of what the Lord is allowing this pandemic to happen. But if we trust in God's plan, if we surrender ourselves to the plan of God, we can be very certain that this pandemic will do more good than destruction of humanity. In fact, this pandemic, I think, was saved the majority, the rest of humanity, because the Lord knows, as St. Paul tells us, for those who loved him, he will turn evil into something good. And so we should never be ashamed of our past, of our mistakes. If we have betrayed people, we just have to turn to the Lord and learn from our mistakes learn from our failures, never to give up hope on ourselves. And that was the case of Peter. Unlike Judas, Peter never gave up on himself. He repented, he returned to the Lord. So let us be careful. Don't be a Judas. Don't allow Satan to enter into our heart. Because tomorrow when we read the Gospel of Holy Thursday, the Last Supper Mass, at the very beginning we are told, you know, when Jesus gave him the bread, it was dark. Dark, a symbol of evil. Judas consumed by ignorance, blinded by his selfishness and pride, just like many of us. And we allow evil to overcome us.